Greetings, Captains here. In this video, I will talk about the best exercises for an extremely strong core based on trusted researches and studies, why they are the best core exercises, why you can't still see your abs, and what to do in order to see them. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Before getting into it, there are multiple layers and elements that are responsible for giving you that shredded looking core, uh, from fat to water and muscle size and thickness. And today, in abbreviation, I will teach you how to get a decent, strong, good looking core. So let's begin with the anatomy of the core area. Alright, you know the muscles that are located in the core area, now it's time to educate you on how to target them efficiently based on studies from prominent resources that I will leave for you guys in the description to check them out and revise what I'm conveying to you. The studies that I've gathered are going to assist us to see the core exercises with the highest EMG activation. But before we begin listing those exercises, not because that some of them might be easy to perform, doesn't mean they aren't effective. So, out of more than 250 exercises, these exercises are most effective for activating the abs and the obliques. Number 1 is going to be standing ab wheel rollout. The wheel rollout is very demanding exercise on the entire body, however it predominantly relies on the strength of the core area on ascending and descending during the exercise. Number 2 is kneeling ab wheel rollout. This is the same as the previous one but just a little bit easier, however it's still very demanding exercise that cannot be done by an amateur in the training field. And during this version of the wheel rollout, never arch your back and keep your pelvic posteriorly tilt at all times so the rectus abdominis will be properly engaged. And if you cannot anteriorly or posteriorly tilt your hips or pelvis, uh, then practice on the cat-cow exercise to master the movement of your pelvis area. Number 3 is Dragon Flag. The difficulty of this one is as pretty as it looks. Also the Dragon Flag activates the entire core area almost equally in a way I don't think any other bodyweight exercise can do. It requires you to activate the erector spinae to straighten your back, glutes for stabilization and extension of your hips, your rectus abdominis, external and internal obliques for deflection and stabilization of your hips as well and lastly the legs for two reasons uh it enhances the way it looks purely for the aesthetic reason and the second reason is to increase the difficulty of their exercise by increasing the distance of the source of resistance to increase the mechanical pressure on the lever that's generating all the force to lift all of this which is the back hips uh, abs and obliques. Uh, therefore, I do believe this is one of the most amazing exercises for the core area that you could ever think of when it comes to the calisthenics or bodyweight exercises, but unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to perform properly. Number four is suspended front plank. This one is an advanced version of the plank. Rather than just like solely planking on the ground, you will be putting your feet on a resistance band or just um, a TRX rope or anything basically allows your feet to dangle. Then, posteriorly tilt your pelvis to crunch your abs without putting much pressure on anything else except your legs, hips, and abs. And also it will be extremely beneficial for you if you're trying to achieve uh, a full planche. Number 5 is hanging knee up with straps. This version of knee raises is almost the same as the ordinary knee race, but it's utilizing the latissimus dorsi more and it's harder to stabilize your core with this variation. Thus, it's activating the entire core area more than the other version of this exercise. However, the study says something vital that needs to be considered before performing this exercise. It says, one limitation to the hanging knee up with strap exercise is the occurrence of relatively uh, high L4 and L5 disc compression. So if you got back problems, avoid doing these exercises because it will apply a lot of pressure on these two vertebrae in the lumbar section of the spine. Thus, replace it with something easier on your back from this list. Number six is reverse crunch incline on a 30 degree angle. This reverse crunch on incline bench is an easier version of the dragon flag as it activates almost all the muscles that are being activated in the dragon flag. But it's slightly easier by reducing the gravitational force by performing it on a 30 degree incline bench. And also bending your knees will ease the process tremendously by reducing the source of resistance, which is the legs, on the lever, which is the hip, back, abs and obliques, that's generating the torque to withstand all of this resistance. So, do that as a progression for the dragon flag. Number 7 is decline setup. This one is perfect exercise for the individuals who are trying to find something slightly harder than the ordinary crunches or setups. The decline will increase the range of motion of the exercise, increase the activation of the upper rectus abdominis and also isometrically contract the hip flexors as a synergist or an assistant to the abs. Number 8 is bicycle crunches. Bicycle crunches are very simple, easy to do, doesn't require any tools or any equipment and yet they are significantly recruiting the obliques and hip flexors as well, not just solo to the abs. Number 9 is Captain's Chair Leg Raise. 
The captain chair is great for beginners and also very effective exercise for recruiting the rectus abdominis. However, word of advice if you cannot perform it with a straight leg, just bend your knees to facilitate the exercise. Number 10 is suspended push up with hands at 10 cm from the floor. Believe it or not, push ups are very effective in recruiting the abs if you don't let your hips sag or drop down while performing it, especially in this suspended form of push ups. It's pretty involved, but you will need to maintain a straight spine or slightly bent through posteriorly tilting your hips to engage the abs while doing any form of push-ups to recruit the abs even more. And if you take a look at this exercise, it's very similar to the suspended front plank that we displayed previously. But the difference in this one is that you will be doing push-ups. Number 11 is crunches. Crunches are a gold standard are considered one of the most, if not the most popular ab exercise. However, you need to keep in mind that the upper part of the abs is engaged significantly higher than the lower abs in this exercise. Number 12 is power wheel bike. Power wheel bike is not really a popular exercise and it's not really easy to find this tool as well. However, it's the most effective exercise in the whole world to recruit the external and internal obliques like no other exercise in the whole world. It has the highest EMG activation for the obliques. Also very demanding on the abs, but not as the obliques though. However, this one could be considered a compound movement to some people. Number 13 is suspended push-up. Same as the previous suspended push-ups, but this one is a little easier. You don't want to have to do deep push-ups or suspended push-ups. Number 14, double leg stretch. This exercise is a mixture of crunches, leg raise, v-sits, bicycle crunches, sit-ups, and curl-ups. It's very, very, very effective, very useful. Uh, it act, it's activating multiple muscle groups and yet very easy to perform. And it recruits muscle all over the body as if you were swimming in a backstroke. Number 15, folding knife. Folding knife is a great compound in moving that engages the entire lateral, anterior, and deep subsystem. That's a thing we'll discuss in a different video. However, it's very useful if you're short in time or just like to use compound movements. Number 16 is curl up with hands behind the neck statically or asymmetrically. This is like a setup but for people with back problems or people who are afraid of getting back problems or even people just like starting to work out and cannot perform a crunch or a setup properly or even doesn't have the stability to perform them or all of what I just described. This one is a great start for them as it recruits the abs specifically the upper region however they could further involve the lower region by posteriorly tilting the hip. This way it would be literally crunching their entire ab area. Number 17 V-sits. Even though this seems harder than a previous exercise, it registers less EMG activation. It does the same impact as an ordinary setup, but it engages the quad, uh, the quads and hip flexors much more than the ordinary setup as you can see here. Number 18 is front plank with scapular reduction and posterior pelvic tilt. Obviously planks are gold standard as the crunches, however not any form of a plank. A proper form of a plank will give you countless benefits. And this proper form is to posteriorly rotate your pelvis to activate the rectus abdominis, then adduct or retract your scapula and straighten your head and don't let it sag or drop down just like the woman in this video, she's doing it perfectly. And remain in this position for the want duration. Number 19 is steer the pot. It's a little bit of a weird and exercise is not really popular, but steer the pot is a modified variation of the plank, but it relies more on the shoulders and the serratus anterior and a lot on the obliques because it registered a lot of EMG activation on the oblique muscle group. Number 20 is lying leg raises. This exercise is the opposite of setups. It also activates the opposite region of the abs, which is the lower region of the abs and is compounded by the legs. Number 21 is front plank with suspended arms. This is a second variation for the plank in this list and this one relies more on the stabilization of the scapula and it engages the chest and shoulders and less pressure on the legs beside the core obviously uh, and I suggest that you include this exercise if you want something new or want to be incorporated in your chest day or something. Number 22 is curl up with 90 degree hip flexion. That's a regression for the v-sets in case you couldn't perform the v-sets. Try it out until you perform the v-sets ever since they recruit almost the same muscles. Number 23 is curl up with 45 degree hip flexion. Now that's a regression for the previous curl up in case you couldn't even do the 90 degree one. And that was the list for the most effective core exercise to target your abs and obliques based on studies and researches. Now if you can do all of these exercises you can still not see your abs yet. Here's why. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video, there are multiple factors that might be affecting your appearance of your entire body, not just like the core area. Beginning with, obviously I don't need a researcher or started from a prominent source to tell you all that if you've got a lot of fats in your body, it will hide all of your muscles, even if you're a humongous bodybuilder, as you can see what fat can do to a bodybuilder with great physique like John Jackson between the off season and when he's on stage. So you might have hard rock solid abs and obliques, but your fan might be hiding it. So want to remove it? 
617 subjects were included and they all did high intensity interval training and this type of training significantly reduced total abdominal and visceral fat mass with no difference between the sexes and also they included saying that running was more effective than cycling reducing total and visceral fat mass and also high intensity which is above 90 percent of the peak heart rate training was more successful in reducing whole body adiposity which is the stored stored uh, storing form of fat um while lower intensity had greater effect on changes in abdominal and visceral fat mass. Thus, high intensity interval training, or as known as HIT, uh, is one of the best ways and literally the quickest way because you tend to finish the type of, this type of training quickly in the gym rather than doing 60 minutes slow stadium marching on a treadmill. Uh, plus, high intensity interval training is also more efficient as it says in the study. Second method for losing fat is resistance training. Also in a similar study it states from 11,981 records resistance training reduced body fat percentage by 1.46% and body fat mass by 0.55 kilogram which is 550 gram and visceral fat by a standardized mean difference of 0.49. And doing these two would be more than sufficient to lose fat next to calorie deficit diet. And in abbreviation, calorie deficit diet is a diet where you eat less than your body burns throughout the day. So, for example, if you if your body burns 2,500 calories throughout the day, and that's including your calorie the calories that you burn during uh, during your exercise, you should eat between 2,250 to 1,500 calories per day, and then your body will utilize its own stored energy sources like carb and fat to fuel itself with energy. But if you will reduce calories, never reduce calories from sources like protein, minerals, vitamins, or water. Only reduce from carb and fat. The second reason is water retention. Water retention could occur because of numerous reasons. Unfortunately, I will not be able to address them all because it will be impossible to do it in this one single video. Uh, so, However, the best solution if you have water retention and you don't know the reason why, go to a specialized doctor to discover the problem. But usually it's because of your diet. Uh, and I will give you a few advices to try to apply them into your life and see if there's any difference or not. Uh, the first one is reduce the salt intakes because of the sodium that's in the salt increase the water retention in the body. But do not remove them from your diet just keep it to its healthy minimum range which is five gram of salt based on the recommendation of the who another reason is uh increase your water intake until the pee become pale yellow or just white and crystal clear because when you prevent your body from intaking water or any element in general it goes into an emergency state where it preserves all the water that the body has because the body is rarely and barely getting any water Thus, to resolve this issue, drink a lot of water so your body would have an abundance of it. The third reason and the last one is to train and exercise constantly and repetitively to get rid of the excessive water that's in your body, or to be specific, to get rid of the subcutaneous water through sweating. The last thing we will talk about today is the muscle mass or the muscle size and thick. If you don't have enough muscle mass, then your abs will not be easily seen. Even if you have very little fat like the young man who has visible abs because they are skinny. They have abs indeed that's visible but they are not bulgy or anything like that, it's just like super flat. And the solution for that is just to exercise with tolerable frequency and intensity and eat high diet protein. With a protein intake from the oval or calories is between 30% to 40% or 1.6% gram per kilogram and up to 3.3 gram per kilogram and this is it for today i hope you learned something new if you want one-on-one -on -one personal training based on your goals and personal needs click on the first link in the description and check out the offers before it's too late and subscribe to the one that suits you god bless